into this story here about Joe Biden's appearance at AME uh, Church, Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina, with Joe, uh, Joe Biden again, Jim Clyburn uh, by his side. Now, this video in particular has gone pretty viral. So Joe Biden, actually, he made this appearance at the church. And I actually, I talked about this on Rising earlier today, too. Um, I think I'm missing this one right here. Yeah, give me a second, guys. Okay, yeah. We're going to start with this one first. So I want to start with the beginning of the speech. We're not playing the entire speech on here. That's not going to happen. But just this first part, Joe Biden speaking at Emmanuel Church. I want you to hear what he mentions, and I'm going to tell you why he has the nerve to do so. Listen to this. God was pierced by bullets of hate and rage, propelled by not just gunpowder, but by a poison. Poison that's for too long haunted this nation. What is that poison? White supremacy. Oh, it is. It's a poison. Throughout our history, it's ripped this nation apart. It says no place in America. Not today, tomorrow, or ever. So that was Joe Biden speaking at the Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, that's not just any black church. That is the church where uh, Dylan Roof killed nine black uh, church members in Charleston, South Carolina. There's Joe Biden talking about white supremacy. Joe Biden, of all people. Joe Biden, who was friends with segregationists and was a segregationist his, himself. Joe Biden, who was friends with Strom Thurmond. Joe Biden, who co-wrote the crime bills, which destroyed black men in the African-American community. And he's going to talk about the dangers of white supremacy. One of the people that has been incredibly dangerous to the African-American community and has done so via legislation has been Joe Biden. And that's even worse because Joe Biden created laws on the books that criminalized black men in this country harsher than white men because of the crime bills. And he wrote those with Strom Thurmond, racist Strom Thurmond. Joe Biden, who said he didn't want his kids to go to an integrated school. And he's going to come to this church and he's going to preach to them about white supremacy, the dangers of white supremacy. Don't be fooled, folks. Just because someone like Joe Biden has a black friend doesn't mean he is not as much a threat to you as the ones who are more over about it. Don't make no mistake. During this appearance, there were protesters at the church who disrupted Joe Biden's speech. And I want you to hear what the protesters did. And we're going to get, get into the thick of this. I talked about this early on rising this morning as well. But having lived in South Carolina, there's some things I want you to see. And we're going to point out some key problems here. And black people, we got to make some changes. We got to make some changes. Let's get into this clip here. We care about the lives here. Did you honor the lives involved for a ceasefire in Palestine? She's fighting now. She's fighting now. She's fighting now. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. We're going to pause here because I want to show you something. I'm trying to see where the thing is here. Right here. So. The look on Joe Biden's face when the protesters interrupt his speech. And then there's Jim Clyburn sitting there to the left of him. Look at who is there front and present. There's Jim Clyburn. And then you have two elder members of the church. Now look at the congregation. It's mainly the younger people who are standing up demanding a ceasefire. Now, 
He comes to this church where nine black people were killed and talks about supremacy at the same time while he is funding genocide abroad against the Palestinian people. How tone deaf can you be? So the protesters have every right, they have every right to push back against Joe Biden. For the people who are sitting up here saying, how dare they disrupt a black space? They shouldn't have been there in the first place. Like I said this morning on Rising, Joe Biden is there. Joe Biden isn't black. And you see he's in there, it's okay for him to be there. Let's continue, watch this. <laughs> These are our black elders chanting four more years. These are our black, and a couple of, there's also white visitors as well, which if I'm gonna make a guess, having lived in South Carolina, they probably don't, they're probably not regular members of that church, but they came there to hear Joe Biden speak. But you see our black elders chanting four more years. not even paying attention to what the younger people have said. You are funding a genocide abroad and you say you care about life and you care about humanity for people. And it's as if, I don't know what happened to a lot of our elders, but it's as if all this revolution and fight that they had back in the sixties and seventies, it's as if they pretend like this life never existed just sitting up there chanting four more years, four more years of what? Next time someone says that to you, ask them, four more years of what? Four more years of $7.25 minimum wage, federal minimum wage? Four more, four more years of the Democratic Party ignoring black voters? Four more years of that? Four more years of what? It's the same thing over and over. So then we get to, to just look at Jim, okay? Jim Clyburn. Did I get back to Jim? Did I skip skip him? Jim Clyburn. Right here. And I called him a sidekick this morning and I stand by it. He's a sidekick. Joe Biden's sidekick. Why are you carrying this man? Joe Biden who can bear, don't know where he is half the time. Why are you carrying this man? What is this really about? These are the people who are holding us back. These are the people who are preventing us from making any type of progress. And do not come to me and tell me Jim Clyburn did a lot of progressive things in the community back in the day. This is not back in the day. This is 2023. What is he doing now? I said this morning, Jim Clyburn has one of the poorest districts in the country. Jim's not poor. Carry and wait for Joe Biden. You sit here, you sit next to this man and you pretend like nothing, nothing he did. Like it doesn't even matter. You sit next to this man and all of a sudden you forget he wrote the crime bills. Has Joe Biden done anything to try to reverse the crime bills? No, he won't even decriminalize marijuana on the federal level and he can do that with executive order. You sit next to him like a puppet. So miss me with the, I did this during the civil rights era. None of that shit matters today. Now I wanna show you something else because of course they gotta have the people come in and back them. Simone Sanders, right? Simone Sanders says, Mother Emanuel AME is hollowed ground in the AME church community.
And in Charleston, especially the shock of people in the crowd at protesters yelling out while President Biden was speaking from the pulpit cannot be overstated. I too couldn't believe it. My response was, I find genocide appalling. That was my response to Simone. Nick, my comrade from RBN said the black church continues to sell its people out to the genocidal pro-police democratic party. Fuck you and anyone using black people to shield a genocide. We need to talk about the Simones, okay? We need to talk about the people who are trying to keep the seat that they got in corporate media so they're willing to show for Joe Biden. I've watched this woman continue to embarrass herself, capping for this man, okay? This woman who jumped across the stage when there were bodyguards present, jumped across the stage to save Joe Biden from a protester when he was running for president, and he still turned around and gave the press secretary job to Jen Psaki and not you, boo. And you're still tap dancing for Joe Biden. How you go from Bernie's campaign and you're pro Medicare for all, how you go from being a part of I'm pro Medicare for all to I'm riding with Biden? Who was against Medicare for all? You do it if you're trying to be an opportunist. That's what you do. Simone Sanders is more upset that there were protesters and some of them white decided to stand up and push back against Joe Biden's statement because he's complicit and funding a genocide. She's more upset with the protesters than what Joe Biden is doing. Well, they shouldn't be in that space because that's not for white people. And you see all the white people in the church? The man speaking is white. You fine with him though. You fine with him. There's always those people that are going to continue to defend people like Joe Biden because they want to keep their spots. She wants to keep that MSNBC gig. We told you what happened with Mehdi Hassan. So here she come out here to let me jump and save and defend Joe Biden. These are the people that we refer to at RBN as the black misleadership class. The Jim Clyburns, the Simone Sanders, the Al Sharptons, the Jason Johnsons. These people have led us nowhere while they just continue to get paid. These people have sat back and their pockets are swollen. But you still trying to figure out how you're going to pay the light bill next month. All these years, these people have been telling you to do the same damn thing. And you've been doing it. Some of you have been doing it. And you're still struggling. And these people have become rich. Something don't add up to me, bruh. I don't see them trying to use their riches to help out you. Say what you want about me. Number one, I'm not rich, but I help out in the community. Those of us at RBN, we do mutual aid. We do clothing drives. We do food drives. We help out people in the community. These people have gotten fat checks by telling you to do something that they know is not going to help you in the end. And that's what pisses me off. Where are the people from the past? Where are the people who will really push back and stand up against this if they were alive today? You think Fred Hampton would go along with this BS? We switch back to Jim Clyburn. I'm going to tell you why he's complicit. I said this earlier this morning on Rising. Listen to what I said about Jim Clyburn because he's partly to blame for this too. But... We can't be mistaken. Jim Clyburn is sitting there right next to Joe Biden, uh, almost as a sidekick, so to speak. And Jim Clyburn bears the responsibility of some of this as well, because he was the one that told his constituents to support Joe Biden in 2020 because Joe Biden was going to deliver for the African-American uh, community. Uh, I actually graduated from the University of South Carolina, but I didn't grow up in South Carolina. So I never really understood the 
admiration for someone like Jim Clyburn, people would say to me, it's because he hosts a fish fry. You can fry your own fish. This just goes to show you how little we are willing to to settle for in the black community. We need to start asking these leaders, some of the black leaders, what are they doing for the community today? And Jim Clyburn is not doing much for the community today. His district is one of the poorest districts in the country. Meanwhile, Jim is living just fine. So I think people like him have led us down this path. They, they've had us continue on the same path that we've been doing for the past couple decades, which is why we haven't received any type of progress when it comes to politics in this country. Now, in reference to Simone Sanders, we have to remember Simone Sanders was Joe Biden's senior advisor when he was running for president for 2020. Uh, she was hoping that she would get that press secretary gig that didn't pan out for her. He gave that to Jen Psaki instead. And it almost seems like they gave her an MSNBC position kind of to just quiet her uh, for, for so much of a bit. But this is Simone Sanders' job. She is still supposed to carry weight for the Democratic Party, to carry weight for Joe Biden, to defend him at all costs. And when she makes this statement that she's more concerned about the protesters that confronted Joe Biden, I'm more concerned about genocide, Simone. I'm more concerned about our tax dollars being spent to fund these wars abroad. I'm more concerned about the fact that the Democratic Party till this day refuses to give any type of real concessions to the African-American community. Those are the things that Simone Sanders should be upset about, but she's not. She's trying to make sure she holds her spot at MSNBC. I think you make a number. Okay, and then Brie comes in there. So we need to bring up this issue with Jim Clyburn. First of all, I'll say this again, fry your own fish. Like fry your own fish. This was the weirdest thing to me, you guys. Okay, so I didn't grow up in South Carolina, but I graduated from the University of South Carolina. So when I moved, I was very confused how much power this man actually had. And people would say, well, Clyburn said this and Clyburn said that. I'm like, first of all, who the hell was Clyburn? Who the hell was Clyburn? And people would tell me, yeah, he hosts the fish fry. Everybody loves Clyburn's fish fry. You got to support Clyburn. And this just is bizarre to me because this man hosts a fish fry. Fry your own damn fish, people. Fry your own fish. This just goes to show you how little we are willing to settle for in the black community. We're so excited this guy does a damn fish fry. We're willing to overlook the fact that the Democratic Party for decades has given us no concessions as a community. And every other group in this country has asked for concessions. They get concessions. We have got nothing. And you got people here cheering about a damn fish fry. That's what bothered me the most. That's what bothered me the most. People being misled by this guy. And I want to show you something from Phil Scott because he hit the nail on the head when he talked about, he's going to show you how Jim Clyburn treats his constituents. This is the real Jim Clyburn that people need to see. He is the person that is leading black people down this road. He is in community with the black church. So when he shows up and he tells them to do something, they are going to do it. He is a part of the black misleadership class and he is holding the black community back and it is time for new leaders. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. People like Jim need to retire and step aside. Fred Hampton would have never led you down this road. MLK would have never led you down this road. Malcolm X would not have led you down this road. The Jim Clyburns are leading you down the road of status quo, do nothing Democrats that are going to give you nothing in return. And I don't want that type of a leader. I don't know about you, but I want someone who's going to be a leader that's going to lead us to some real concessions. OK, listen to what Phil Scott said about how Jim Clyburn treats people in his community. Listen to this election that happened after the fact. And what did black folks do? Black folks in South Carolina went out and voted for him again. Even though he said blatantly, you not getting no cash payments. He, this is not a white supremacist talking. This isn't the average everyday, them folks that just don't want black people to have nothing. This isn't Ron DeSantis. This is Clyburn. See, when y'all point out Ron DeSantis and all the, the Tommy two reveals, what about the Clyburns? To me, the Clyburns is worse than the Tommy two reveals. Why is it that what Clyburn says isn't blown up except in our spaces? 
Think about what he just said. It's easy to call out people who are Republicans that are against these things, but it's harder for people to call out, especially when you have black Democrats who talk to the people in the community this kind of way while they getting paid. These the people you need to focus on because they're the ones that are within the community, misleading the community. He told you, you not getting it. What kind of representation is that for black folks to have? But the reason why he's so arrogant is because the majority of you black folks in America and definitely South Carolina keep sending him back. Now he's staying on message with this. Let's fast forward to 2022. And he was at his annual fish fry that he normally have. And you have black people having all the hell problems that we have. And yet when you give black folks something, you're going to give them some fried food. Fine. He has his annual fish fry. All the Democrats come out. All the people come out to eat some old fried food. I heard that's dry. It don't taste too good at all. <laughs> so this, this particular clip that we're going to play here, you know, it's courtesy of what we saw posted from the black channel. Shout out to them. But let's go ahead and roll that one. Um, I'm doing well. well. Listen, but I gotta, I gotta go. But I appreciate the uh, fish fry and everything. I did want to ask though. Reparations is a big thing. Look, reparations are big with me. I'm the only one so doing the bill. Why y'all keep fucking with me like on that? I'm the only one doing the bill. The you see how he talked to his constituents? You have to read the uh, captions here because there's a woman speaking in the background. You see how he talked to him? He said, "Why y'all keep watch this?" I did want to ask though. Reparations is a big thing. Look, reparations are big with me. I'm the only one doing the bill. Why y'all keep fucking with me on that? You heard what he said? He said to one of his own constituents, why y'all keep fucking with me about that? This ain't the first time. He's been approached multiple times by his own constituents and this is how he talks to them whenever they're like, listen, we need you to do this. We are asking for you to do this kind of thing. This is how he speaks to them. And people still vote for him. I'm the only one doing the bill. The it's my bill. Well, which bill? The reparations bill. HR 40? HR 40. Okay, okay. And I've been doing it for 20 go. years, 30 years. So, and it's been around for 38. So why y'all keep telling me about a bill that's been there for 38 years? Because they're your constituents and that bill does not include cash reparations. That's why they're talking to you. Jim Clyburn is one of those people like he has big ego and he does not want to be bothered. He feels like you should not come to him with any type of complaints or anything. But I'm sorry, when you sign up to be a politician, that's exactly what people are supposed to do. Now, listen to what he says here. 2022, he said that that he helped author, author the bill, that he it was, he was part of it. It's his bill, right? So he was playing a different tune, said, well, I told him in 2019 that you ain't getting it. Forget about it. Now I'm going to play a different game with him to see, you know, how, how they're going to respond in 2022. And in the process, he said, stop effing with him Yep. about it. Cause I told y'all behind back in 2019 that I'm not giving you, I'm not, uh, you ain't getting it. I told you that. So now I'm annoyed. Now I try to be nice and play a game with you, but now I'm annoyed with you. So that's why I'm saying stop effing with me. This is your, this is your representation, black America telling a, a, one of your constituents stop effing with me. I have never seen a white politician tell a white person, when they ask them about a policy issue for their community to stop effing with me. You see the problem people. This is how he speaks to his constituents. He don't give a damn about you. He's just trying to get paid. Now I want to show you something. We'll skip the joy read one. I don't really need that one. I want to show you something here. I'm gonna show you something else they're doing. Jamie Harrison, also a part of the black misleadership class. Remember, I used to live there. I'm familiar with how these people move. Let me show you something that he says. Before we get into this, I want to say something else in reference to Jim Clyburn. Jim Clyburn having this fish fry, which Phil Scott said is not really that good. I mean, it just, but him having this fish fry, right? People will see this as a win. People in the community will see this as a win. Look what Clyburn does for us. 
Meanwhile, seniors in Jim Clyburn's community are rationing their meds while he's pocketing money from Big Pharma. Meanwhile, still living in the poorest, one of the poorest districts in the country, but he gave you a fish fry. And then you got this clown, Jamie Harrison. Listen to what he says. When you think about everything he's done, the first thing he did, even before he became the president of the United States, African-American woman vice president, breaking through that glass ceiling, African-American woman on the Supreme Court, breaking through that tradition to make sure that that voice was represented. So instead of having black folks at the back of the bus under Joe Biden, we are driving the bus. So apparently now we're driving the bus because Joe Biden made Kamala Harris his vice president. So he's like African-American woman as vice president, African-American woman on the Supreme Court. So here is Jamie Harrison, also a part of the black misleadership class. He is here to convince you and make you believe that we're actually driving the bus. Really? Who do we talk about on this show is driving the bus? The billionaires, right? They're the ones that own more wealth than the bottom 99%, right? The billionaires, right? How many black billionaires in this country? Let's use common sense, people. How many? Can you name them all? We know Oprah. We know Rihanna. But come on, let's think about it. So he's here to let you think that because we have representation that we are driving the bus. That's his job. To mislead you. To make you think we got big wins. None of that matters when you still look at the wealth percentage in this country, you still see that black wealth is still at the bottom, still at the bottom. None of that matters. None of that matters if you don't have any net worth in this country, okay? Your income is nothing without net worth. If you don't own shit, and that's not to talk down to anyone, I'm just telling you how the billionaire class will treat you in this country. I'm just telling you how people will treat you, how you're treated if you don't have it. But he wants you to think you got it all now. How many of these people helping out in the community? How many? Is Kamala Harris out there feeding people when a camera's not around? Katanji Jackson? All the homeless people in D.C. that they walk past every day. And that's what's yeah. so important right now and why I'm so proud. I'm the, the second person to be elected uh, chair of the black person to be elected chair of the D.C., third black person to hold this role. But it was because of Joe Biden saying that let's give this guy a chance. Let's. And when one of your constituents actually confronted Jamie Harrison, when they asked him about reparations, Jamie Harrison ran off the stage. I have this voice represented in terms of how this party moves forward. And I can go over and over again of how he has done this. So this is at core and central of who he is. He's not gonna run away from it. It is not about something that is politically poll tested. It is about who Joe Biden is and what he fights for each and every day for all of Americans, but specifically so that black Americans understand that he sees them, that he hears them, and that he's fighting for them every single day. Fighting for you how? They don't even they don't even tell you how how's he fighting from you how's he fighting for you you at the bottom in this country man how's he fighting for you canceled his promises that he made to you when people said these things about the protesters and you'll see this as well another one here is jason johnson this is the same guy who sat up here and said that brianna joy gray and nina turner were misfit black girls this clown he keeps popping back up don't know this woman but listen how they mislead you you know tara it, it's such a great point because i think one of the issues and you know when they say biden is old his age it's not just his numerical age and his sort of gambit you know sort of the way he walks and talks and sounds it's also his politics are old like he's still 
still sort of doing 90s, 80s politics, including on the Middle East. Let me play a moment that happened in that church and get your comment on it. Here is the protest that happened. Without the truth, there's no light. Without light, there's no path from this darkness. I understand the passion. Look, folks, after the civil... Thank you. And there goes another member of the black community. I'm, I'm projecting that was probably an older member of the black community, again, heading us down the wrong path. Here she is telling Joe Biden that he's a good man. How do you know he's a good man? Do you know Joe Biden personally? Do you hang out with Joe? You hanging out at his house? Do you get in Joe's car? Do you call Joe on the phone and you have chats? You don't know. What you do know is his record. How quickly the people from my community just forget. How do you forget these things? We need a complete change when it comes to leadership, when it comes to the black church, we need a complete change because some of these pastors and some people may get mad when I say this, but it is what it is. Some of these pastors have been bought off. Keeping it real. Listen to what they say. Sarah, that to me says that the complete dichotomy with Joe Biden. For, for black voters of, of, of a certain age, he's their guy. They're the ones who delivered him the, the, the nomination and they're still with him. But then you go under 50, under 40, under 30, you start to see a different story. And then you see some other communities who don't necessarily feel the love. You know, I, I think that Joe Biden handled that moment um, brilliantly because this is a very complicated issue. And, um, you know, he's been trying to balance doing the right thing from a foreign policy level, what's in the best interest of the U.S. and in the, in the region with domestic politics. And it is not a complicated issue. They continue to say this because they don't want to denounce the genocide that's happening in Gaza. Because if you're doing that, then you're calling out Joe Biden's horrible foreign policy coverage and his horrible foreign policy decisions that he has made. That's why they say it's complicated. They do the same thing with Russia and Ukraine. It's complicated. No, it's not really. You got one nation, one state, a nation state that is in power, that has been crushing and oppressing the Palestinian people. Then you got three black people on the screen to sit up here and pretend like this shit not really happening. Joy can keep this job. Medi will loses his job, but Joy can keep this job because she know where she can kind of float about in that space saying things to make it look like she's questioning the narrative without actually questioning the narrative that's why she got flunkies like jason johnson on here and the timing of this issue couldn't be worse from a domestic policy perspective because of what you're saying here with certain voting demographics particularly in the black community younger black americans um, and, and Arab Americans in this country in places like Michigan, which is a really important state, key swing state. Um, and this is a challenge because this election is going to be very, 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 very close again. So we can't afford to, to lose, uh, Biden can't afford to lose any of his coalition. Um, but I also think it's important for people to remember that President Joe Biden, regardless of his age, regardless of what his position on the uh, the war in Israel and, and what's happening there in the Middle East. This is a person who has the best interest of all Americans at, 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 issue, at, at the forefront. He understands that. And by I can't even continue playing the rest. She's basically telling you to overlook everything else. And she's telling you that he has the best position. If Joe Biden has the best position, he wouldn't have people by the thousands protesting out against him and his decisions that he's made. He does not have your best interest at hands. These are the sellouts, folks. These are the people that have made it into that space because they continue the status quo. Jason Johnson, Joy Reid, and whoever the hell this woman is on the right. 
These are the people that they put in mainstream media spaces. This is why you don't see people like Brianna Joy Gray on these spaces. You see, they don't invite her on. Do they invite Garland Nixon? Garland Nixon used to be a part of Fox News. Ever since Garland Nixon went independent, do they invite Garland Nixon back onto these spaces? No, because they know what you're going to tell the audience. And their job is to control the narrative. But the thing is this, folks. Black people, we really have to make serious changes. Serious changes. We got to stop following people like Jim Clyburn, Al Sharpton. I don't care about what they did decades ago. I care about what they're doing right now. These people need to retire and a new generation needs to emerge and lead us in the right direction. And I want you to do so on the basis, thinking about what these people would do. Fred Hampton, MLK, uh, Malcolm X, what would they do? What would Kwame Ture tell you to do? Those are the people you should be reading about. Those are the people you need to be listening to. You go back and listen to the old footage. Those are the people that you should be paying attention to. Not people like Jason Johnson and Jim Clyburn, because they're part of the reason why we are stuck where we are right now in the first damn place.